Aloha and welcome to this brief introduction to crud in play. When I say crud, I'm not talking about grime or dirt or stuff like that. I'm talking about the four basic uh, operations that you generally want on data. Create, read, update, and delete. Okay. So for example, when you go to a new form in our contacts digits um, application, there's an example. We're going to create something. Um, when we go to the home page, we can actually read. Okay, we can get read access to all the the um, the instances that are stored in the repository. Now you'll see that in this particular screenshot, I there's now an edit link um, associated with each entry, and that's going to enable us to do update. This is what you'll actually be implementing in this upcoming WAD. So this is a preview of what you'll need to do. And um, when you click that link, you retrieve um, the data and you're now able to make changes. So you could change Joe to something else um, and click the add button or the up. It could change to update in this case and it's all good. Okay. Delete, not so much. There's no delete actually in this upcoming WAD. But hopefully you'll see that once you can do create, read, and update, in particular update, then the delete operation is, is, a, is a pretty trivial um, extension. Okay, so how do you actually get this to happen? And the, the, the canonical, the most popular design pattern that I know of is to, use an, to create an ID field and use that to figure out what's going on. And so what we're going to do is both our model instance, which is um, contact, as well as our form data instance, which is contact form data, we're going to add an ID field to it. It's going to be a long, could be an int, could be a string, you know, it really doesn't. But, you know, and in keeping with kind of the back end relational database direction that we're heading, um, we'll make it a long, okay? The crucial thing, the crucial property of this ID field is that if it's zero, that's a flag to the system that we're dealing with a new, um, you know, a, a new a, a creation event. So the user is create, you know, adding some data to the system. If it's non-zero, that's an indication to the system that we're dealing with existing data um, that that we want to do an update event or maybe a delete event. Okay, so um, once you kind of Groke that idea that this it's all about what the ID value is. We're going to be passing this ID around and it's either zero or non zero, and we do two different things depending upon that. Then you're going to be fine. So, uh, creation is using an ID of zero, and then read, update, delete, everything else me is indicated by a non zero ID field. Okay, this, so once we have that, the next thing we're going to do is actually we're not going to have two separate pages, one for editing and one for creation, we're going to have the same page for both creation and editing. And the way we're going to do that is by using this ID field. Okay, so when I told you on the last slide, we're going to be adding an ID field to our form data. And so basically when we're, um, when we're dealing with that page to this, you know, the, the form page, we're going to use that ID field to determine whether or not the user is creating a new instance or whether the user is editing an instance that's already existed. Okay, so let me, sh I'm going to briefly overview some but not all of the, the code that gets changed in order to do this. Just so you kind of, I, I'm hoping that I'm going to give you the kind of the conceptual map that you're, that will help you through the, the details of doing this. So the key thing that we're going to change about the routes file is this get method. Okay, and you see now the get method is um, being passed an ID field, okay, and the ID field is um, a long value, and that crazy Scala syntax there is saying that if no ID field is provide, if no ID is provided with this get method, then it's going to default to zero, okay. So our our um, method new contact in application is always going to be passed in. A value. If it's zero, it indicates the user, you know, nobody indicated anything about what that value is. And if it's non zero, it means it was explicitly passed. Okay. Second thing is that 
we're going to update our uh, controller method, which we call new contact previously. I'm going to keep it new contact just to um, help you make the connection between the old code and the new code. But you know that's not a good name for it anymore. It really should be just you know manage contact or something. So the idea here is that when we get um, when we when this method is invoked in the controller, it's always going to be passed an ID. And as you can see, we're going to use the value of the ID to indicate whether we're creating new data or whether we're trying to edit existing data. So that very first line there that says contact form data, ternary operator, um, where we first check to see if ID is zero. If it's ID zero, then what, what we return as the value of that data uh, variable that we're defining is just a new empty instance of contact form data. But if ID is not equal to zero, then what we're going to return is a new instance of contact form data where it's been initialized with an actual contact instance, which we've looked up from the contact database by, passing, by invoking the getContact method with an ID. Okay? So here again, you see this use of the ID method to figure out whether or not we just want blank data or whether we're supposed to be retrieving data from the database. Okay? Um, and then after that, we're going to fill the, the data, um, the, fill the form with the, uh, with the data that we've retrieved, and then return it. Okay? In the repository, um, we, have, we still have that method called addContact. Before, it would just always add a new contact to the database. Now what it's going to do is check the ID value. If the ID value is equal to zero, then we know we've got new data, and we've got to get a new ID for it. So the way we do it in this simple mock database is just find out the size of the database and currently and add one so we get the next integer. And then we create a new contact instance uh, with that and, and put it in the database. Um, otherwise, if the, con if the ID value in the form data is not equal to zero, then we know that we're supposed to be updating a previous contact instance. And so we create a new contact instance with the updated data and put that, okay, with the form data.id, not with our newly created ID. All right. One of the things you'll also notice is that in our uh, previous version of the repository, we were using this, this contacts object was simply a list of contacts. Now we need to actually be able to update to things by ID so it's changed to a map where we can now use the put operation to um, actually destructively you know modify a um, an entry. Okay the other thing you noticed in our user interface if I jump back there for a second okay is that we now have this edit field associated with each entry. Well how do we implement that? Okay, let's go forward and we can see that. It's right here. So in our um, index.scala.html, we've just added one final line to that, uh, the body of that for loop where we say, here's a link, and, it's, and the label of that link is edit, and the href, we're using this reverse routing thing again in play, which is kind of convenient. We say invoke the new contact method in our application controller, pass it, the value of the ID associated with this contact. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So we're, we're going to basically invoke that controller method with the ID associated with a pre-existing contact, which enables that method, which we see right here. Okay, now it's getting that ID method. It's going to be non-zero because it's coming from a pre-existing contact, so it knows it can go out and, and create a, get a new one. Okay, finally, when we're actually displaying data in the form, okay, we need to basically um, provide the ID field in the form data so that when the user posts information, when the user you know, hit, hits the add button, the data is posted. How is the controller supposed to know whether this is supposed to be a, a new instance that I'm that are, is supposed to be created, or is this editing of a pre-existing instance that I've given to them at some point in the past? Okay. Well, we we could, but we really don't want to display the IDs in the actual user interface because you know what what is the user going to do with an ID? It's a read-only field, and it doesn't really you know kind of mean anything. It has no meaning really to them. It's an arbitrary value. 
So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use another HTML feature called hidden input types. Okay, so we're updating our form with a, a, a new input type that I'm putting at the very top, which type is hidden, and all it's going to do is store the value or you know put into the the form that gets posted a new um, key value pair that is the ID associated with this data. So when we're creating a new when, when the user wants to make a new instance of a contact, so they've just pressed the new contact form, that value there will of course be zero, right? When the user has hit the edit link, okay, on the home page, and we've pre-filled the form with data, then the user will, then the, um, the value of this ID will be non-zero, okay? Or it'll be the value of whatever the, the ID associated with that record is, okay? So that's basically um, how we do things, okay? So in summary, all right, just to kind of, so you understand the, the high level approach here, we're gonna use an ID field to indicate whether or not data is pre-existing or new. If the data is new, that the ID field is gonna indicate that by being zero. If it's pre-existing data, the ID field is gonna indicate that by being non-zero. We're going to update the controller, the repository, and the, the view, the table of images with this ID value, um, or, or we're basically going to update them to each of these three places to inspect the ID value to determine whether or not we're dealing with a new value or a pre-existing value, and then do the right thing. Okay, so that's the overview. Um, I do believe in the book they've been doing something similar with their, their warehouse management system. And, um, well, actually, I know they're, they're doing the same thing because I've read the book myself. So um, hopefully this will both reinforce your understanding of what's happening in the book and actually maybe help you understand better what's going on in the book now that you have this kind of view of, of how these ID fields are being used.